Welcome back. This tutorial is on computing variables using the compute command in SPSS to create new scale variables. The compute command does quite a few things. This is just one of them, and we're going to be using this to take ordinal or nominal variables. In this case, the example is going to be using nominal, and we're going to change them into an interval variable by adding several of them together. The next video is going to be looking, instead of adding them together, it will be averaging them together. So this one here is on adding them together. And the steps are pretty much the same for both of them. First step is to run the frequencies of the original variables. I'm using the ESS2002, that's the European Social Survey, and I'm going to be building a scale that has to deal with your national roots. I've selected three variables that measures if you were born in this country, if your mother or if your father was born in that particular country. So I'm going to go ahead and paste these into my syntax. I'm going to go ahead and run the first one. And you always want to check out your frequencies, no matter what kind of tests or measure it is you're going to do, always take a look at the starting variables. You want to see just what values are listed in the valid section and see if there's anything you wanted to recode. If you wanted, say, if there were the don't knows. In the ESS, the don't knows are already missing. If you're using something like the MCIC, you may have to decide if you want to exclude the don't knows or if you want to recode them into another group. You'd also want to look for things like skew. These particular examples do have skew, quite a bit of skew. However, because this is a very specific uh, uh, variable that we're looking to build, we're going to say that it's okay for now. So I've got these three. Notice that they're coded one for yes, two for no. Technically, this is okay. There's nothing wrong with this. Uh, it will give you different results when we do the computation, and I can show you that later. But personally, I like to have all of my dichotomies as zero, one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to code all of these no's as zeros and my yeses will remain ones. So the higher up in the scale you go, the more uh, national ties, national roots you have to the particular country. So I'm gonna go back to my syntax, and here we have step two listed, check for the recoding. Oh, I also wanted to mention reversing values. This is particularly important if you have um, opinion scales or some sort of measure where you're you're asking somebody any given thing. We'll, we'll just use the opinions of strongly agree to strongly disagree. Let me go back to this output here for a moment. In this case, these were all yes, no, yes, no. And then let, let us imagine that father here was no, yes. The compute command is only going to be looking at these numbers, and you want to make sure that all of the variables you're using, the numbers match. So if, in this case, father was 1 equals no, 2 equals yes, we would need to flip that. We would need to do a recode to make sure that it aligned with our other variables. So at this point, we'll go ahead and do our recode into different variables. And I saved a little bit of time here. You should all know how to do recoding by now. If not, I have a couple of videos to help you with that. Here's my recode command, recoding these three. Since they all had the same variable values, I can just recode them all together and their new variable names. We're going to run that to make sure that it ran OK. Oh, it didn't. My little slip, nobody's perfect. My recode command, this is again, if you're working in your syntax, you have to make sure you know what you're doing and double check. I had an equal sign here. It should have been the word into, but it's recoded now. And always go ahead and double check your new frequencies before you do anything. And there they are. All I did was flip them around so I had zero ones and that they were going in the direction that I was interested in. Now I'm going to introduce you to something else called Cronbach's Alpha. Cronbach's Alpha is a little test score. I won't go into the mathematical explanation for it, but you can kind of figure it as 
how nicely will these variables play together? So under Analyze, we go to Scale, Reliability Analysis, and let's bring these guys back in. I could have done it on the original variables since I didn't actually remove any of them from the list. They were all the yes, no's, and stayed in line. If you do end up recoding to, say, take out a don't know or group different values together, you want to make sure you run Chromebox Alpha on the recoded variables. So after this, we're going to hit the statistics button. There's a little guy up here called scale if item deleted. Make sure that's ticked off. And then we're going to go ahead and I'm always notorious for making sure I don't have it in the right space. I go ahead and click paste. Head over to my syntax. And here's the score. Well, the syntax at least. I'm going to run this. And Chromebox Alpha is going to measure to see how reliable that these are going to work into becoming a common scale together. And the first box you're going to receive is just your case summary. How many cases were in here? How many were excluded? We were able to exclude 70%. And Chromebox Alpha, here's your score. It's going to be between 0 and 1. 0 means that these variables will not work together whatsoever. A perfect 1 means they're in absolute harmony with each other. And ideally, you want to have a score of at least 0.7 or better. 0.7 or better. Now, this box down here is the one that we ticked off, scale of item deleted. And what that's just going to say is, if I delete this first variable, this one was the if I was born in that particular country, my new Chromebox Alpha would be this score. Now, if this score is better than this one, then we would normally go ahead and delete it in order to get that new score. And this is actually much better than what we had here. But just for the sake of the example and for time, I'm going to leave it in. Normally, if you had a, a larger group of variables, and also I was wanted to see how important this would be to have you yourself involved in this. The father's score would drop us if we remove that to 0.577, so we're definitely going to keep that one. And the mother's score at 0.569. So once we said this, we have at least our 0.7, we are good to go. Then we're going to time for the transformation. Let me go ahead and make sure my syntax is in the right place. Step four, compute the new scale. So we're going to go up to transform. And the first option there is compute variable. It's going to bring up a big variable calculator. On the side here, we have our list of variables. Up here is our target variable. So I'm, we're going to type in the new name. I'm just going to call it citizen roots. And then I'm going to call it my label. And this is going to be called national roots higher equals more. And it is numeric, so I'm just, it's checked by default. Click Continue. And now we have to say, well, what do we want to do? Well, we're going to find our variables. Here they are, your new ones, if you're in file order, are at the bottom of your list. We're going to bring it over. And then I'm just going to go ahead and add. And bring in the next variable. Bring it over. Add. And then bring in mothers. Bring it over. And that's it. As you can see, there's less thans and divides and numbers and all sorts of different things you can do. We'll be using compute command later to do some different effects, but just for this particular skill, this is all we're going to use. We're going to paste that into the syntax. There it is. And then I'm going to go ahead and run it. No errors. back to my syntax, and then the last step is just to go ahead and run the frequency for a new scale. So we're going to analyze, descriptives, frequencies, and reset this guy. Here's my citizen roots, over. If you're interested in getting any sorts of measures of central tendency, you can go ahead and check those along, paste it in. And here we are. Now have an interval 
measure that looks at the national roots combining three nominal variables and our new scale is from 0 to 3. And the way that we can interpret this, zeros would be if each variable that contributed to this, the three citizen question variables, all of them said no. And 3.4% of the this particular variable said no, that they were not born in this country, their mother was not born in this country, and their father was not born in this country. Then one, 7.1% of our respondents said yes to at least one of those questions. At this time, we're not sure which one, if it was mother, father, or self that was born in the country, but they said yes to one of them. 5.3% said yes to two of those. So mother and father, father and self, or mother and self. We don't know which two, but they said yes to two. And then 84% of respondents said yes, their mother, father, and the individual, the respondent, were all born in that particular country. All of them were citizens of that country. And that's building a scale variable.